Hey what's up guys, it's that time that we are going to be doing a full review for the iOS 18 to give you an idea what to expect from the iOS 18 in September this year. So to begin with, we have one of the biggest upgrade in the home screen customization. As you can see, my home screen has a different icon and they are positioned differently. Now in order to get that, you need to press and hold in an empty area to enter into the jiggle mode. And as you can see at the top left corner, we have the new edit button instead of the plus icon. Tap on that and we have now two options, widget and customization. Tap on customization. A new menu will be pop up at the bottom, which has some new options, which include automatic, dark, light, and tinted modes. Plus you see a light icon, which is used to darken the background wallpaper. Next to that, we have the small and large icon buttons, which are used to change the icon size. I prefer the small icon, so I will choose that. Now below that, we have an automatic and a dark button, which are used to change the icon from light to dark. Mine are already in the dark mode, which are looking stunning. Next, we have the light mode, which turns the app icon back in the old icon style, or you can say in an original app icon, which looks stunning. Right next to that, we have a tinted option, which has some new feature. Like we have a color bar, through which you can choose any color to change the app icon to a specific color. Below that, we have the opacity bar, which is used to adjust the color not only that, we also have a color picker which we can use to pick up any colors from the wallpaper to our icons. Unfortunately, this feature is not for my liking as it's just putting that color layer on an existing app icon which kind of a look ugly. But as this feature is still in the beta version, so we hope that this final version will be different. Now for me, I will prefer the dark mode app icon which is looking stunning. As of now, the dark theme is implemented on the system apps. The third party applications are still remain in their original app icon. Now the second most important feature which I really liked is the update in the control center. We see a complete overhaul of the control center with the new circular icons there. So starting from the top, we have the plus icon. Tap on that and you will enter into control center customization. There has been some new changes in here like there is a new drag button in some icons which when we drag they will change the shape and the size of the device and also the features will be changes depending upon the size of that particular icon. It seems that only the brightness, volume and focus mode don't have the option to change the size other than that all the other icons have the shape and size change option. Now right at the bottom we have the adder controller which includes a bunch of new controls you can add. There has been a lot of options available for all the different applications that are system based and even the third party application control center options has been available. Plus I like the search bar to easily search any controller and add it into your control center simple and easy. Previous method was really hacked you have to go into settings and do that process. Now another thing which you will notice in the control center that we have a new option on the right side. When you press there, there is a new controller appear at the bottom like we have music controller which is separately located. Connectivity has their own separate control center. Plus we also can add more custom controllers in here on a different page. Definitely this is going to be a different control center altogether. Even the Android side doesn't have that kind of a features. So definitely I hope that this is going to be one of the biggest feature for the iOS 18. Anyhow, at the top, we also have the power menu button. If you press and hold it, it will bring on the power menu. Now, another big feature that is coming for the iOS 18, which I really like about is the ability to lock any app on the iOS, which is amazing. And to do that, we just need to tap and hold on the app icon, which we want it to lock. As you can see, I'm locking the photos app and a new required face ID option is available. I just need to press that and a pop up splash screen, which says if you lock the photos app, then all those apps which have access to the photos app will require face ID in order to open the photos app. Now press done and that's it. My photo app is just locked and the only way to unlock is using the face ID. And this is going to be one of the biggest feature. I really didn't thought that Apple will be giving us that particular feature in their iOS and it is finally happening. So definitely it's a big upgrade. And you know, another cool and nice feature which we have seen in Android for a few years now is the ability to change the lock screen side icons. Like if you go into the lock screen customization, you will find out that we now have the option to change the side icons on the lock screen. Just remove the old one and choose from the list of the new one. Just remove the old one and choose from the list of any app icons you want. Also, you have the search bar. You can search any of the icon easily and it can be added on the side 
of your lock screen. Now another cool animation is for the flashlight. Now if you turn on the flashlight, we now have this cool animation in the dynamic island. Well, it's also included some two new features. Like if we drag it vertically, the intensity of the light changes. While if we change it horizontally, it will change the light expansion. Cool. But the thing you note here is that the animation is quite large and it is taking some space in the dynamic island. And yo, now we are talking about the animation and Apple is all about the attention to detail. Like look at the volume up and down controller, which is giving us a cool animation when we press the volume up and down button. Even if you take the screenshot, you will notice that this animation is going to be happening both in the lock screen and volume up and down button. So definitely a great attention to detail from Apple in iOS. Now, one of the interesting feature, which I really wanted to talk about is the calculator app. If you open it up, we now have a new redesign app. Like previously, we have the correct button hidden. Now we have it here. At the bottom, we now have a new calculator button, which have some new options like basic, scientific, math notes and convert toggle. If you turn on the toggle button of convert button, we have option default. We have the US to Euro set for convert, but you can also choose from different currencies and different measurements as well using that particular button. Now let's talk about the math notes. It's a new feature in which you have the ability to give you answer right away if you type equal after the equations. Even if you write with your hands, it will give you an answer in the same writing or if you type it using the keyboard, it will also give you same answer fast and accurate, which is pretty amazing and a new functionality in a calculator app. Widget customization is another big feature which is coming with an iOS update, which can be done right on your home screen. Like if you enter into jiggle mode, now we have grabber option is going to be available at the right bottom and you can drag it to change the size of your widget. If you lower the size of the widget, then the functionality also going to be lower. And there has been another thing which you have noticed here. If you press and hold on that widget, we have some new option. Like if you tap on this option, you will get the full size widget. But if you choose the second, it will convert that widget into medium size. But one of the cool thing that when we tap on the first icon, it will convert that widget into an app icon, which is nice. Do note this mode can be activated on any app which support the widget. Next feature, which we are going to be talking about is the eye tracking, which is a new feature. When Apple first announced it, people are excited about that to test. In order to open that, you need to open the accessibility and in here you will find out the eye tracking features. Just tap on that and you have bunch of options available. If you tap on the eye tracking, then we need to first set up eye tracking by following few steps to register your eyes. After that, you can control your device using your eyes. To be honest, I have tested it out. It is still in an early stage and it's not tracking eye accurately. But despite that, still it's a new and interesting feature which we hope in the future will improve. So while we are in a setting, there are some changes coming this year in the iOS 18. So let's talk about that. Scrolling down at the end, we now have a new section for apps. Previously, we have a list of apps in the same page, which require to scroll all the way down to get this required app and kind of making difficult to find required app. But now with the new app section, we have all the system and third party apps available right in one section, which is amazing. We also see apps are now arranged in an alphabetical order. Plus we also see new search bar at the top, making finding an app quite easily. Now in general, we have some rearrangement as well. We now have new description, which shows what this section will include in here. Now, if you go towards the iCloud, you will notice that we have a new complete redesign of the iCloud menu. It's kind of a looking modern, which I really like, but you need some time to get used to that. But still, it's a nice addition. Now, here is a big one, which people wanted for a very long time. This is a phone application. Now we finally have a T9 dialer. Now, if we start typing, you will see that it will give suggestion. And if we continue typing, it will give the number that is matching that particular number, which is available in their phone. And now when I find the required number, just tap on that and it will put that number into the dialer. And even if I don't remember the number, we can still find using the T9 dialer option available here, which is going to be a good, good feature to implement. And speaking about the dialer, you can also record phone calls and transcribe them afterwards. Now on the receiving end, the other person will hear if you are recording them. They will get a prompt that tells them you are recording the phone call. 
Well, that's an awesome feature which I thought will never come in an iPhone. We also now have a brand new first party application in iOS 18 which is the password. So it does require Face ID whenever you want you to unlock that. And for the first time, if you open that particular app, you will see a new splash screen which highlights new features. After that, giving permission to some of the settings, you will finally get access to the password app, which was essentially was in the setting apps, but now we have a new separate app. This app looks so good and so well optimized. So definitely, I think that this is going to be an app which most people will be using iOS 18 also have the iPhone mirroring feature, which is one of the biggest feature in an iOS 18, especially in the Mac OS Sequoia. So what it does, it will allow you to control and see notification from your Mac when your phone is locked. So you can go into your settings and then into general and then AirPlay and continuity. And you will have this new section here for the iPhone mirroring. This will allow you to see your iPhone and see notification from your nearby Mac. Tap in here and you will see a list of Mac that are your nearby. And here is an example of that where you can literally control any portion of the iPhone right in your Mac without unlocking the device, which is pretty amazing. The RCS messaging is finally here in iOS and it's only available right now in the select carrier in the US. And you guys, these are some of the features of the iOS 18. I really think that this is going to be one of the biggest upgrade in terms of the software from Apple. And we really hope the Apple intelligence to be coming soon in the beta testing so we can test out all those features about the Apple intelligence. And you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks.